to renew or not to renew? That is the question, or it is for me this week at least, because I've got to admit I've come to a bit of a crossroads with my sim racing, and slap bang in the middle of that crossroads is iRacing. Now, long-time viewers to the channel will know that I regularly used to sprinkle iRacing videos in amongst the other sim titles that I used to race, but lately you'll have noticed it's been nowhere to be seen for months, for three months to be precise. That's because I've become really disillusioned with it lately for a number of reasons. Disillusioned with the poor driving standards, disillusioned with the punishing damage model, and most importantly, disillusioned with the sheer cost of it all. Now, I've spent hundreds on this sim. I've got a substantial collection of cars and tracks, but despite that expenditure, last season I found a lot of weeks I still didn't have any decent options to race. To be honest, I pretty much binned off iRacing completely. That is until I got the reminder email last week to tell me that my sub is up for renewal in one month's time. Now, the cost of the sub renewal doesn't actually bother me that much. You can get some pretty decent deals in the Black Friday offers, and actually it works out less than what I pay for several other of my monthly streaming services. But it's the cost of the content is what really puts me off. And not only that, the rate in which own content quickly becomes out of date. For example, the GT3 car that I've owned has just been retired. So that means if I want to carry on GT3 racing, you guessed it, I've got to buy another car. So what do you think I should do? I'd love to hear your honest thoughts on what you like about iRacing, what you don't like about iRacing, what do you think it does well, what do you think it doesn't do so well, and most importantly, do you enjoy watching iRacing content on my channel? But anyway, with one month to go, I thought I'd give it one final try, just to see if it can persuade me to change my mind and renew for another year. For my first race back, I'm taking on this GT4 challenge at Phillip Island. Now, I'll be starting P12 on a grid of 20. Let's see how I get on. Well it's only a 15 minute race this one so I reckon we'll see a lot of drivers in a hurry and no sooner do I say that look at the number 19 Porsche of Daniel Smith oh he runs into the rear of that McLaren driven by Thomas Abele then he swerves over to the right and almost clips Julian Gray. Now Gray was in front of me but he had to get right off the gas to avoid running into the back of Smith so that has at least given me one position there's a sniff of another one as well but I'm reluctant to tuck it up the inside of Abele this early in the race. There are a few different lines out of that corner so I just didn't want to take the risk of poking my nose up the inside only for that McLaren to go for the apex and push me out onto the grass. We'll tuck in behind the Burley for now as we approach this hairpin. Oh, and we're three wide as we enter the hairpin. That's the last message that I want to hear. Juan Martinez in the Porsche tucked it up the inside. Meanwhile, we have the BMW of Jordan Mulak on the outside. Mulak has forced his way through as well. There was a bit of contact there, but I had to be so, so careful to get through that safely. Three wide into a hairpin is not where you want to be, particularly in the middle. So yeah, really tense and stressful racing on this opening lap at Phillip Island. I've got no idea what position I'm in. We'll have to wait until we cross the line to see the leaderboard update. But up over Lukey Heights for the first time. Another really tricky part of the track, this one. There's a gap up the inside that I may be able to go for and get not one, but two positions. Juan Martinez and Thomas and Burley were out really wide there. We've managed to get past Martinez, but we weren't able to get the second position. That McLaren of Adele just a little bit punchier coming out of the corner. Meanwhile, in the rearview mirror, it looks like we've lost Martinez. Well, I'm just relieved to get through this first lap up skate. Let's go back and check out a replay and see just how tight it got into turn four. Nilla corner, it's a right hand hairpin. And yeah, there was a big gap on the inside that Juan Martinez took in that red and black Porsche. But then I had the BMW to deal with, Jordan Mulak. There was a little bit of contact. Thankfully, we got away with a 0x. So two positions down after turn four. Luckily, we were able to get one of them back over Lukey Heights. Coming down the hill, watch the Porsche in front. He runs in really hot. So does Iberle in the McLaren. At this point, I thought I was going to be able to take two positions, but Iberle just had the pace to stay in front. Keep watching Martinez in that red and black Porsche, though, because we lost him in the final turn. Oh, he's just giving it a bit too much gas. Two tyres on the grass, and that pulls him out into the gravel. 
So with all that frantic action to deal with on lap one, I had no idea at all what position I was in, but when we crossed the line to start lap two, I got confirmation. I was down to 14th, so we've lost two positions from where we started on that opening lap. But look how tight it is between this pack of four or five cars in front. They have been banging doors all the way down the start-finish straight. Now there's a gap on the inside once again. Now on the first lap, I was reluctant to dive into it because I wasn't sure if a Berlay was going to go for the apex. He did it on the first lap, so that gave me the confidence to go for the pass on the second lap, and we have pulled it off. But we've got to be aware of an Aberle fight back, though. Up the inside is the hairpin. Oh, but I wasn't prepared for the cars behind. I've been punted out into the gravel. And that's it. We're going to be rejoining right at the back of the pack. And it was the turquoise Mercedes of Matisse de Groot who ran into the back of me there. Now, I thought I got my breaking point pretty much nailed on. There was no car in front of me, so I didn't need to break any earlier than I normally would. So I don't quite know what caught out de Groot here. Let's ride on board with him. Yeah, it looks like he either just missed his braking marker or he just got sucked into braking a bit later than he should have. Watch it from the chopper cam and watch his brake lights. He's going to get on the brakes right at the 150 meter board, but then he's going to lift off, see the lights go out, and then by the time he gets on the brakes again, it's too late. He's running into me. So really disappointing, but no hard feelings to Matisse. It was an honest mistake, and fair play to him. He did send me a message after the race to apologise. He said he broke a little bit too early, tried to correct himself, and then, of course, broke too late. But no point in getting upset about it because there is still a race to be had here and there are still positions to be gained. We're right behind Juan Martinez and we're also closing in on Skyline Tyndall. Tyndall made a mistake in the previous corner and rejoined the track. Oh, there's a big collision between those two cars there. Tyndall, I don't know how he managed to save that. Incredible stuff, but that BMW is all over the place at the moment. I'm a little bit worried about getting too close because I've already seen him make a mess of turn five and then very nearly take out Juan Martinez as Martinez is trying to go past. So we're going to have to be a little bit cautious here, but at the same time, we need to start making progress. So I can't hang back for too long. And in fact, if I can get a better run out of this final turn, I may be able to strike down the start and finish straight. Now, Tyndall is going to stay defensive. He remains on the right hand side so we've got no choice but to go out wide to the left now I'm gonna to have to get this pass done before we reach T1 if we arrive at the corner and I'm not past him I'm gonna to have to back off and that's exactly what happens well, the yellow flags are out though have we lost someone at the southern loop we've lost more than one there are two cars out on the grass to the right so that is two positions gained it was Daniel Spiteri and Daniel Smith, the two drivers involved in that incident. So let's go back and take a look and we can see what caused it. Uh, Smith's in that green Porsche at the front of the pack. He's got Spiteri right behind him. Spiteri is going to have a look up the inside into the southern loop. He just tags the rear of that Porsche and then Spiteri gets tagged himself by the McLaren of Thomas Iberle. Riding on board now with Spiteri. Yeah, he's just a bit too far back to be trying to move up the inside. You've got to assume in that situation that Smith is going to be going for the apex. And then to make matters worse, the McLaren at the back of this trio also decides to go for the gap that wasn't really there. Two cars out, but Aberle survives. Returning to the live action then towards the end of lap three, and I'm still stuck behind Tyndall. The longer I stay behind this BMW, the more I see my hopes of making any progress in this race disappear. Look at the gap to Martinez now. He's more than three seconds ahead. Now, I'm currently in 17th position thanks to that collision between Smith and Spiteri earlier in the lap, so I need to get past Tyndall on this lap and get into 16th. If I don't do it on this lap, I suspect that Martinez will be too far ahead for me to close back in. So once again, I move to the outside, but I'm even further away this time. There's no chance I'm going to get past around the outside of Turn 1. He looks really unsteady in front too. I don't know if it's erratic driving or whether it's just a bit of a ping issue, but it's making it really difficult to understand what he's going to do next. I'm going to better run out of Turn 2. And this is going to be a real opportunity. Oh no, but Tyndall lost it right in front of me on the kerb. I had nowhere to go. I was clipping the grass myself on the outside kerb, so I was terrified to slam on the brakes too hard, but in the end, I didn't 
brake hard enough and I ran into him. Let's check out the replay for the second time this race. I've crashed out. And I've got to hold my hands up to this one. This could have been so much more easily avoidable if I'd not been so aggressive out of that final turn. But I had the bit between my teeth. I knew I had a faster exit. I was committed to going as fast as I could to try and get the run down the straight to pass him. But of course, we never got that far. And in following Tyndall so closely, I did run out onto the grass on the outside myself a little bit there, which severely hampered my ability to get the car stopped and manoeuvred around Tyndall. So yeah, I've got to take my fair share of the blame for that incident. But once again in this race, I had to dust myself down and reassess my targets. Were there still positions to be gained? Well, yes, there was, because we're back to the live action on lap eight now, and we've closed right in on the portion of Daniel Smith. Now, he's going defensive on the run up to this hairpin, so I'm going to hang out a little bit wider and try a later entry. If I can get on the gas a little bit earlier, we may be able to apply some pressure on the outside. We're close, but we're not quite close enough. So I do just lift there to tuck back in behind him. Now we're going to jump forward a lap. This is lap nine, the penultimate lap of the race. We're still right on the tail of Smith, trying to find a way through to at least salvage one more position before we see the checkered flag. He's using so much of the track and clipping a lot of grass and curbs as well. I'm a little bit worried he's going to lose it too. But I'm going to try the same slingshot line that I tried to use against Tyndall earlier in the race. I'm a little bit further behind Smith just to give myself that little bit extra reaction time should Smith make a mistake. He didn't though and he's going to go defensive into turn four. So once again, I'm going to try a later entry. Oh, but I get my line completely wrong there. We clip the curb. We take too much of the curb. That is a another instant point and we have lost several tenths there with that mistake. So that might be the race done with just a lap and a half to go. We're now 0.7 of a second behind Smith. We may just have to settle for 18th position here, but let's see what the next few corners bring. If we can reel in that Porsche again, we may still have a chance to get the job done on the last lap. Once again, his lines are really erratic through this section. In fact, he's not going to get that turned in. Surely, no, he's out onto the grass over Lukey Heights, so we will get the position. We're up to 17th, and that spares us the blushes of being the last last of the cars out on track. And here's the mistake again. Yeah, gets the wrong line. He's carrying too much speed and he can't stay on the tarmac. So yeah, that was pretty much the story of my first race back in iRacing. There was certainly potential there for a cracking race. There were some great battles in the mid-pack by a bunch of drivers, very evenly matched. Now, I probably should have been among them, but unfortunately, a couple of moments of really bad luck cost me the opportunity. So a disappointing outcome all in all, but the big question still remains. Did I see enough in this race to change my mind and renew that subscription? Well, the honest answer is, I don't know. I'm still very much on the fence with this one. So I think I'll need to do a few more races over the next couple of weeks and then make a more informed decision from there. In the meantime, I really would love to hear your opinions and your thoughts on iRacing. Please do let me know what you think of the sim and whether you think it's worth my time renewing. But for now, I'd like to thank you for your time in watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you on the grid again very soon. Cheers.